Hi, this is Pat Moore. I'm here with VP and Principal Analyst Melody Brew. We are here for the Hot Desk Podcast. We made it through 2023 and we are rocking into 2024. Mel, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? How Post CES, you're surviving? I did. Yeah, actually, um, true Pat Moorehead spirit. I had zero fun. Uh, I didn't drink anything and I did not attend a single formal sit down dinner. So wow. it was uh, going in and, and just, you know, cranking out the work. Uh, first of all, meeting with clients, giving them feedback, um, going and looking at all the all the cool stuff. Uh, not necessarily on the show floor, but inside of the uh, inside of at least as as much as the Venetian had yeah. uh, in there. And then, uh, as as y'all probably saw, did a did a few uh, videos out there with the uh, with the six five. A few, just a few. A few. I think uh, in I think in, in aggregate, uh, everybody did about twenty five of them. But wow. I don't know. I did seven or eight, but uh, uh, it's it's good. But no, I'm looking forward to twenty twenty four and what tech brings to the table. And you know, Mel, it really feels like. Well, you know, 2023 was really about the year of the GPU. And it's like, well, what do you mean by that? Well, whose stock price went up? Whose revenue went up? Uh, it was NVIDIA, those who compete with NVIDIA, and then Microsoft, right? When they came mm -hmm. out with uh, uh, OpenAI, Open ChatGPT, uh, and, and they integrated that. Uh, and again, we're not stock pickers or anything like that. Uh, but the rest of the industry didn't necessarily get all the big benefits uh, around it. And 2024 really seems like the year of AI implementation. And that's mm -hmm. going to be particularly true uh, in, in your area. Now, uh, folks like Zoom and Teams and, and, and folks like that kind of got, got the jump on some of the features, but mm -hmm. uh, not everybody is using them. And not not all these companies are able to uh, monet, uh, monetize that. But you know, in areas that you know on Hot Desk Podcast, you know, where we're talking about you know tools, trends, trajectories, kind of the 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 new normal in modern work. Uh, this is the productivity play, right? It, it's happening in in your your space, uh, which I, I just find an incredibly uh, exciting, but I still can't believe we're in, in 24 already. It's really crazy how quickly last year went. And you said, you know, like the, all, everything that was happening last year in AI, if you think about when we first started to talk about AI, that seems like it was just a couple of months ago. And yeah, you're right. Like there are certain things like meeting summaries and, you know, the things where I think people are now so used to using that when we first talked about it, it was like, whoa, that's crazy. And we had to kind of explain what it was and how it would work. And now it's just become so commonplace. And I think this year we're going to see where it's actually going to really boost people's productivity and people are going to learn to use it. And I think we talked about this early on where it's not magic. It really isn't. It's not something where it's like, all of a sudden it's going to do your work for you and it's not going to take your jobs. It may take some jobs for sure, but it's again, you know, we, we talked about this several months ago. It's, it's not the AI is going to take your job. It's the person who knows AI better is going to take your job or knows how to use AI better because these tools really do require some human input, especially the creativity tools like Adobe's. They yes. do require human input. And so you have to learn to use them. So that's actually a, a, a really nice segue into our, our first um, topic, which is CES, which you just yeah. came from. Yeah, yeah. So just just real quick, uh, we're going to be talking CES 2024, kind of a high level. What, what were the highlights? Uh, we're going to talk about the IBM work and mobility study. We're going to be talking Zoho work drive. And finally, which is always my favorite, hot or not. Ooh, the Microsoft Copilot key. This is getting spicy. Okay. <laughs> so let's uh, let's dive in here. Uh, CES 2024. Mel, I know you were glued to your PC uh, watching this all happen. We need to get you there next year or something. Well, you know, I was no? going to say the, the funny thing about CES is I went for like 20 something years. Um, and what I loved about this year's CES was all of the pre-briefs. I was in New York. I got to see a bunch of stuff with HP Poly, and I got pre-briefed by Dell. I got, and I just actually really loved, I got the hands-on. I got to actually yes. see it. 
without actually having to go to the show. And I saw so many people that I, a lot of reporters, analysts that I follow on Twitter who were leaving Vegas and they're like, it's, they just were exhausted. I'm like, there's something I used to refer to as Vegas tired. <laughs> it's like, even if you don't drink, even if you don't go to the parties, it is, there is a Vegas tired that CES will bring on you. That is just, it is hard. But there were a lot of things that um, that I saw before and a lot of things, of course, that I saw virtually. I, I did watch your panel on the AIPC. Um, that was really nice that Intel screamed that. That was cool. Um, why don't you, let's hear from you about that one. I feel like you're, I don't want to put you on the hot seat, but that was that was a neat one to watch. You kidding me? I mean, I've, I've put more into this AIPC thing. I feel like I do when I'm, uh, I'm asleep. But no, listen, um, the AI PC uh, technologically got kicked off by Qualcomm in, in Hawaii mm -hmm. with its new part that'll probably show up in systems in, in mid-year. Uh, Intel, who still has 80% market share and carries with it this amazing amount of weight in the ecosystem, uh, came out with um, a, a part card called Core Ultra, uh, which had integrated... Um, NPU or a specific piece of silicon dedicated to, to AI and uh, the company heralded, hey, this is the beginning of the AI PC. You could buy these. You can go out there and buy them. And on stage, uh, I had uh, MJ from Intel who runs the business, but I had the presidents of HP, Lenovo and, and Dell. Uh, it's the number, number two people uh, at the company. Uh, who run, ran the PC business in addis, addition to uh, uh, Pavan from Microsoft who runs Surface and part of Windows to talk about uh, what this means as well. And uh, what I'll share uh, at this highest level and, and I'll leave the rest, you know, kind of to you would, would be to um, Competitors coming into the same stage to make investments and make proclamations is a good thing mm -hmm. uh, because you have to get the industry to a certain level. And whether that was with Internet PCs, sub $1,000 PCs, uh, the first, uh, you know, when we looked at desktop to to notebooks and then thin and light notebooks, it takes the industry to get together holistically and then after there's kind of a baseline, they can go off and beat each other up uh, day in uh, and, uh, and 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 day out. Um, you know, from a from a platform perspective, you know, some things I really appreciated what HP brought to the table is a very good articulation of how uh, AI is making the experience uh, better. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a uh, a plus for them. I really appreciated Dell's flagship new XPS uh, comes out there with some incredible displays and you it, it, it's a, a design that you can't actually see the outline of the trackpad. The entire base is a trackpad and it really, I, I feel like, took design to uh, the next uh, level. Uh, one Lenovo call out I want to make is a device to two in one mm -hmm. uh, very similar to what microsoft uh kind of had pioneered where uh, you can detach the uh top of the display uh, and and use it as a tablet but what lenovo did is is they had you detach it and that that uh uh that that display turns into an android tablet which you know, like, well, wait a second. Why do I need Windows, and why do I need, you know, what? Why do I need two, two in one? Well, Android, from an ecosystem perspective, and quite frankly, from a battery life perspective, um, has its advantages uh, versus versus Windows. <laughs> and the cool part is, let's say, was the integration, uh, so it doesn't completely confuse the end users. Let's say when they're in Windows mode, you take a picture with uh, the display or let's say the tablet and automatically that file is transferred to windows file manager or windows photos when you click it back in so some smart integration customers have never really been warm to these uh uh hybrid type devices but i want to get one in my hands and uh and check it out before i issue any by the way i love products like this 
like yeah. I love uh, modularity and uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that that was kind of the we could sit here and make this whole thing about uh, about CES. I know we could, and you know, it's funny you say that because I one of the things that I wanted to point out about something that HP introduced and that I saw in New York was the Fortis series, which is the some of their Chromebooks that are really built for kind of that durability in various environments. And as you're talking about that Lenovo um, product, it makes me think about something like that, where somebody can be using it in various settings, like in a construction setting where you're in an office and then you have to take a tablet out to you know, just check on something, take some photos, whatever, then you take it back to your desk. You don't necessarily want to haul around, a di you know, two different devices. That's one device that you can kind of use in two different environments. This um, Fortis series is like a very kind of rugged, durable um, series that has like, it also uses an Intel, Intel processor, but it it's meant to be kind of for that like mobile worker and to be durable and reliable in all different environments. So I think what you're talking about that, like it's not just a sit on your desk and use it for one thing. There's lots of various use cases for having, you know, different systems and being able to use it in different environments. And you mentioned the, the, um, the Dell and the, what was the monitors, um, Anshul, who just had a baby by the way. Yay. Uh, <laughs> new baby in the family, uh, wrote a very nice piece about all of the the monitors and, and a bunch of other stuff for CES. So we could talk about this all day, but we've got plenty of stuff up, up on the website, and I'm sure there's much more to come on that. So. Yeah, let's jump to the uh, the next topic. And uh, IBM. By the way, I had two conversations with uh, IBM at CES. It's always great to see them in there and a lot of this was was with them IBM and automotive companies uh, like Toyota had a had a great conversation with uh, Toyota and IBM and also had a great conversation when I was there uh, with IBM and Samsung and how the two of them uh, are are working together so you know behind a lot of these uh, consumer facing companies is is an enterprise company like IBM and so what's going on here what is this modern work and mobility and I think something to do with automotive Right? It is, you know, it, it's it, like it's put, let's put all the pieces together. So one, we know there's so many connected cars. There's 375, three, 367 million connected vehicles that are going to be on the road by 2027. So tying all of it together, there's an office depot study that shows that 28% of people do some of their work from their cars. And then also look at the fact that we have things like WebEx and Mercedes there's all kinds of, you know, connectivity. You can take calls from your, from, you know, like cars like Tesla have, you know, pretty much full internet connectivity and you can put it up on the screen. Most of them have security where if you're driving, you can't do like a, a Zoom call or whatever, but there's so much connectivity in the cars and people are actually using their cars as a workplace, taking calls from whether it's a, in a parking lot or they're doing it on their commute, but it is becoming really part of the remote workplace. But of course, this exposes people to all kinds of new attack surfaces, right? So security is not my thing. You want to talk to, about security, talk to Will Townsend, but <laughs> when, when it comes to the security endpoints, of course, that's something I need to be paying attention to. But also, if you look at just from an automotive standpoint, automotive CEOs see security and privacy as one of their top challenges after sustainability. So it's really something that they're paying attention to. And so this IBM study is really just, you know, kind of basically show, kind of pointing out the different places where security and security is a threat, but also where, where it can be a revenue enabler rather than a cost center for um, automotive companies. It's also really something that if like automotive companies need to be paying attention to from a reputation standpoint, that if, you know, say you are, if 28% of people are doing some sort of work from their car, and that is a place where the breach happens, that they're the ones that are going to get dinged on that, right? You know, people are going to say like, oh, well, I was using my, you know, my Mercedes to take my WebEx call or whatever the, the, the end point is that they're using. And that if that's the place where the breach happened, they're going to have a problem. 
So, no, by the way, it makes perfect sense. I mean, it's, it's what the, what I'll add to that is as we get to autonomy and safety, mm -hmm. uh, working and being entertained in the car and the car really turns into your living room or, or your office. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this will come over time. Uh, but it is, uh, it is going, uh, to happen. And it makes me seem like, uh, makes me think at some point, you know, companies like a Qualcomm, uh, being connected and, and on the entertainment side, uh, might have a, a leg up uh, here, but I don't know. NVIDIA is in this and we all love the game and, right. and, and be inside of these cars. In fact, uh, you can play, uh, first person shooters on a Tesla today that's yeah. powered by AMD, uh, AMD Silicon in there, but needs to be secure, needs to be more optimized for productivity. Cause right now, right. You're not supposed to be productive in the car, right? You're supposed to be like, right. Like driving. But, but the reality is we do phone calls. We do stuff like that. We pull over in a McDonald's uh, drive through and, and do a meeting. Uh, I, I've found ways to prop up my camera on my steering wheel. Like, uh, like nobody would, would ever, uh, ever believe. So, yeah. yeah. And really there's an opportunity for telco companies too, to make sure that, you know, people do stay connected and that there's, you know, that you can't always rely on your hotspot in your car. So there, or your hotspot on your phone to be working in your car, especially as you go from place to place. I always lose connectivity as I pull into my driveway. So sometimes I have to pull over by the mailbox before yeah. I come into the driveway. So I think there's just, in order for people to, because like you said, you know, you're sometimes taking a call from your car. 28% of people do. It is becoming a place like remote work is just, it, it is not work from home or work from the office. It is now work from anywhere. And the car is becoming a real part of that. It is for sure. Hey, let's go uh, into a modern work update from Zoho here. Okay. Zoho Work Drive 4.0. What are we looking at here? You know, Zoho. I've used uh, all their products. Uh, oh, wait, for what it's worth, uh, Zoho got it before everybody on a, on a fully uh, vertical platform. They do the hardware, the software, the cloud, the applications, all their applications can seamlessly uh, share data. And pretty much everybody's trying to replicate in terms of platform what, what Zoho did, whether it's Microsoft, Google, uh, Zoom, and Salesforce. So anyways, not a plug for Zoho, but just a kind of a, a table setting of what we're getting into here. You know, you you are so right. They do file storage and collaboration so well and with almost no marketing. Like it, they are just, it's like a word of mouth and it is yeah. almost cult-like. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've been totally. to these, you've been to these Zoholics and they call them Zoholics for a reason. These people are like, they love their Zoho platform, but they just made an update to Zoho work drive. Um, and this is the second of the 4.0 highlights. So they're, the objective here, I think, is just to simplify all the data management and reduce the, the multiple apps. And that is one thing that I think they're really good at is kind of minimizing the top context switching. So a couple of the big updates is they have um, an API with WorkDrive um, just to streamline data flow and central, centralize enterprise content. Um, really, the focus there is on hybrid work, so enhancing team efficiency in the hybrid work environment basically allows for like the big chunk uploads. And then on the collaboration part, they've integrated with OpenAI their Zia, which is their um, their generative AI, into WorkDrive. So Zia will make real-time suggestions to your comments on a collaboration doc. So say you know you're in a different time zone it'll take the context of what's in the document and kind of give it some context of your comment and kind of basically make, make recommendations to your comments to kind of make it all flow together so that the comments, whether what, whatever time zone you're on, they'll all kind of sync up together so that you're not waiting, you know, till the next morning or for whatever time zone somebody happens to be on to then, you know, get to the next version of whatever, you know, you're all working on together. Zia will also, you know, like a co-pilot, you can explain what it is you want 
the Gen AI to do and we'll cre help create it for you. They also um, did a couple of language updates, 22 new um, Indian languages to their language support, a couple of other things on accessibility and search and discovery. They're about to have um, their analyst summit in February. So I imagine this is just like a little teaser. So this was, um, I think, just probably, probably one of many updates we'll hear from them in the next couple of months. So. I'm looking forward to it. No, it's good stuff. Can't wait to uh, try this out. And and the, the the one final, final, I'm gonna call it a plug, but something to consider with uh, Zoho is because everything's on the same platform, you can enter and exit pretty much almost any way. This is just another way to enter through where all your stuff is, right? Yes. Um, and, and, you know, it'd be, you know, like Google Drive, right? Uh, yeah. Or or things uh, like that. It was funny. I almost called it My Drive, which <laughs> is what like Microsoft called uh, called their file file system like ten years ago. So. I actually forgot one thing. They did add some search and discovery things and some integration into Zoho Mail. Um, you know, one thing I I really not one thing, but something I really appreciate um, about Zoho when you're as a user, I have used a few things like once or twice, and then if I haven't used it before or use it again, they'll ping me and say like, we see you haven't used this in a while. And it's not like, hey, use this more. It's like, are you sure you wanna be paying for this? Yeah. And I think that's a really that's a really great way to keep a customer. Yeah, I think it is too. Yep, so looking forward to what comes out of their uh, analyst day. Uh, let's move on to the final topic, hot or not, uh, Microsoft recently added a copilot key or i would say their their oems their partners uh, yes. added a copilot key uh essentially you touch it uh, and it invokes surprising copilot okay. uh, first key keyboard uh key they've added in i think 10 years but uh what are your thoughts on it so i think you know in general we're seeing like the ai is just going to be infused from the system to the silicon to the hardware, right? And we're seeing it just across the board. I think this is inevitable um, or some shortcut, whether it's a programmable shortcut, you know, whether it's, you know, command C, whatever, but that's already copy for some people, I guess, you know, depending on what you use. I think it's inevitable as people really become reliant on co-pilots, whether they're, however many people are gonna just, you know, ditch their current keyboard and, buy a new one because they want a copilot key. We'll see how long that takes, but I definitely think a, a, a copilot key at some point is just gonna be, it's inevitable. It's kind of like the volume key. It's like, how do you how do you live without it once you have it? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I know you're a Mac user. I know it. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we, we, we all have our, we all get used to what we get used to. I use the Windows key and have been since it came on I think 20 years ago. Uh, and yeah, I mean, stuff, you know, I, I look at even my my Logitech keyboard that I have right now. Uh, I use a ton of the mute volume up, volume down uh, and the Windows key. A lot of the other stuff, the function keys and stuff like that, like I could save, but no, thank you. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, settings button don't use. And by the way, this is going to be a great non-committal analyst point of view on that is that users will base uh, use it uh, will be directly related to the utility it provides if and here's the other thing is they're not they're they're unforgiving they hit it and they get bored uh, or they don't like it they're gonna tune out yeah I think you also add keys and things like that to surface it and show you're serious like this is how serious Microsoft is. I mean, you can't just remove the keyboard uh, key after a year. There's a full supply chain, which by the way, is why not every vendor has it, is, is that, that this needs to make its way through the supply chain. Uh, and um, it, it didn't, you know, the OEMs didn't necessarily have time to do this, this is why you won't see it uh, on every system. But uh, mm -hmm. net, net, I like it. 
It's a physical yeah. instantiation of what's going to be Microsoft's biggest differentiator for the next couple of years. Uh, and I do think uh, it adds value just like the Windows key. In fact, I don't even know what, what the other the other key that I'm looking at even does that's a Windows key. <laughs> it has like four, I don't even know what it does. I've never used it, uh, but I do use the Windows key. So I, I like it and I will use the Copilot key when it comes on my system, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I agree. I think it's gonna be something that if you don't have a copilot key, you will need at least a programmable key that gets you immediately to whatever copilot that it is that you use, whether it's on Windows or something else. It, the more we get used to using these things, the more they're going to have to be like immediately accessible unless they just pop up, you know, as soon as you log in. Sounds good. Hey, so, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I talked over you. Oh, I was just saying they just, they're just going to be actually, I think actually see, they'll become more seamlessly part of our lives. So maybe in two years, we won't need a key. It'll, it'll just actually integrate into our lives. <laughs> no, that's great. And that's smart. And I think it's a good way to end the show here on you being right and smart. <laughs> um, but Hey, what, uh, what, what do you have coming up uh, in the future? Next couple of weeks, travel, travel wise, uh, tuning into events, stuff like that. So I have, um, well, I do have the, the Zoho Analyst Summit and um, Enterprise Connect is coming up in March. That is the big, the big um, UCAS event in Orlando. Um, let's see, oh, as I'm looking at my calendar. Um, those are the two big ones that are coming up <laughs> the, the most, let's see, yeah, the soonest. Yep. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, I've got uh, <laughs> Mark and I. I have, um, oh, yeah, I have, and Ring Central Analyst Summit. Uh, I've got the Samsung event coming up next week. Uh, Unpacked incredibly. I'm in Austin for a week. Then I go to Seattle, uh, do some stuff uh, out there, and then going out to San Jose the week after that. I might stop into McAllen and see uh, what's going on with uh, Zoho. Okay. And I'm off to, uh, a Cloudera event in the middle of February. And then it is Mobile World Congress, uh, which um, actually is uh, more exhausting than CES, believe it or not, <laughs> because it just carry it. It's so much broader in terms of where you have to go to, to see the stuff that, that you want to see, but I'm looking forward to it. But nice. Yeah. Well, Thanks everybody for tuning in. To the show here, episode 14, we made it to 2024. 14, and look, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate everybody <laughs> tuning in. Uh, give us uh, feedback. You know where to find uh, Mel and I. Hit that subscribe button. We're streaming to YouTube X, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Have a great week.